Was it true? Oh my god, it was it was interesting. Yeah, I was there for five days. Don't tell me everything. Say something. Three days. Is there something for me? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I came some I, I brought some church help for you. Do you want that? <laughs> I have some conversation. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm talking. I can understand. <laughs> the motivation is you were also calling me. Sorry. Oh, come on. <laughs> You ordered a lot of drinks with the money. Yeah. Oh, so I don't do one. So, yeah. It's a lot of drinks. Yeah. You know, we have time. I have all this time. You but don't. you don't. You have no, you do. So, you, don't, you don't have a wife with me. If I could remove. No more excuses. No more excuses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we have to celebrate. My trip to Georgia. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> we will. We will. <laughs> my house. I'm just going to move all the things. It's going to happen in my house. Sure. But I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. 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 Sing? Yes. Some song. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We'll have a karaoke thing. Don't worry. Yeah. Oh, my All God. Right. <laughs> okay. Time to book your Yeah. Finally, I'm with my niece. She's just like adorable. She's yeah, like nice human. She was crying when I left, and I was like, oh. <laughs> so how long is the flight? Like two or three hours, something like that? Right? Are you serious? I spent 35 yeah, hours. Like, was I that swear, far? I promise. You know, I had uh, 15 hours. 15? Yeah, 15 hours in Istanbul. Oh, that's interesting. Mm, I did it long, I didn't know. Know. Because I think the same day there was a shooting, and I was like, oh, no, oh, I just. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, the sun was beautiful. I'll be there. I'm, I'm going to go somewhere. Here. First, no, 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 first go to Tbilisi. You promised me. To my country. Yes. To Georgia. Yes. We'll go, we'll go with you. We'll go with you. We'll go with you. That's so much fun. Oh, my God. That's like so 30 fun. Hours, 30 hours. <laughs> That's too much. Okay. No, from here, it took me about two, four hours. Mm -hmm. Because I had to transfer from the system to the system, which is very far. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But from there, it was terrible. Oh, then, thank you. So, thank you. Yeah, six hour flight, time for six hours. Six hours. I see. Oh, I'm going to six hours. Oh, I six hours. Six hours. Six hours. Six hours. Oh, man, I don't want to see. Yes. Plane like that, you know where I am. Like, so but I think we have been on to. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I just think of when I bought the ticket. It was six hours. Yeah. Six hours. You had a vacation or just? Something so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it was really very uh, long. And then it's cold. Yeah. I like the Bay Area. I think it's so nice. I know. Nice. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it's beautiful. Yeah, it's super cool. So we had a crime. Very nice day. Crime? It was also fun, but yeah. it's really fun. You see in the camp in the morning. Yeah. 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 Especially when they see any form like me. Like, oh, she has to spend money on the cigarette. Oh, I can't smoke that. Oh, it's too much. Thank you for that. Can you have a cigarette? Oh, God, I don't like this. Ah. Uh. Night life is great. Miss anything. <laughs> so I uh, sent the bills to my mom. Mm -hmm. So the tickets and the Ubers. Mistakenly, I shared the Uber with my daughter. I thought, why did I say you're not much? <laughs> it was a mistake, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, no bar from the <laughs> Actually, they should find out the two. The Point to the left, yes. 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 I don't understand. And if you need it, but now you are for you. But now you are there. <laughs> if you want to license, you can Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I will find as possible. Well. <laughs> the person is so relaxed. I'm more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's she's amazing. She really is. Especially the way she treats my friends. It's like she was mm -hmm. amazing. She was completely fine. She was amazing. She looks mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> She loves you, and it's it's. I would never do that. <laughs> like I like a lot of people. Special in parties, but cooking. Yeah, but she likes the pain. It's a nice relation. She's not like I'm she's not forcing on her, but she loves it. Yeah, she's still the same girl. Yeah. I thought the Georgian food was the best of all of them. No, I'm telling you. <laughs> the same thing is amazing. Every food has the one thing that has the one thing. You have two minutes? Uh, yeah, two minutes. Okay, awesome. I have Alex to Seem to have been moved. You're still walking up. Forward. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm like four weeks since I've been in here. <laughs> when you were moved up, they used to be back against the wall. Yeah, I mean, I'm sick. I'm well, there's, I think there's scratch marks right there. I don't know if that indicates. Scratch marks were sharp. I think both days are scratch marks. Oh, oh. Yeah. 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 something on your doesn't Good afternoon, everyone. We start with some opening comments. As you all have repeatedly heard Secretary Blinken say, it has been one of his top priorities to disrupt the global flow of synthetic drugs and their precursor of chemicals, which fuel the fentanyl crisis into the United States. For years, bilateral, bilateral cooperation between the United States and the People's Republic of China on counter-narcotics had been suspended, which hindered our ability to make progress on addressing this crisis that touches the lives of so many Americans. That began to change when the Secretary traveled to Beijing last June and raised the importance of cooperation to address the fentanyl crisis. 
Those discussions laid the groundwork for the meeting between President Biden and President Xi Jinping at Woodside, California in November, where the leaders announced the resumption of bilateral cooperation on counter-narcotics. This week, the United States government began to put that agreement into practice. Over the past two days, Assistant Secretary for International Narcotics and Law Enforcement Affairs Todd Robinson joined an interagency delegation to Beijing, marking the initiation of a bilateral counter-narcotics working group with the PRC. The launch of this working group marks an important step to advance concrete law enforcement action and to coordinate targeted measures to stop the illicit flow of precursor chemicals that are fueling the fentanyl crisis. At this working group, the United States emphasized the importance of multilateral and international cooperation on chemical precursor scheduling, information sharing, and other measures. The PRC has already started to take steps to dramatically curtail the supply of fentanyl pr precursors, including taking regulatory and law enforcement action against dozens of PRC-based synthetic drug and chemical precursor suppliers, issuing a notice to industry, and resuming the submission of chemical incidents to the International Narcotics Control Board's Global Information Sharing Database. Those were important initial steps, and through this working group, we will continue to press for concrete action. Addressing the fentanyl crisis in the United States and the surge of synthetic drugs globally is a transnational challenge that demands a strong and coordinated global response. We will continue to engage in the robust diplomacy required to make that happen. That, Mr. Lee. Um, thank you. What can you tell us about the Secretary's uh, imminent travel plans? Uh, I don't have any announcements uh, to make about upcoming travel. Obviously, he has made four trips um, uh, to the Middle East since October 7th, and uh, you can certainly expect him to make future visits, but I don't have any amount announcements to make today. Uh, okay. And then, uh, just secondly, but uh, related to, to the Middle East, have you gotten any clarity from your people about this hospital raid in Janine yesterday or on uh, or from the Israelis about the destruction of the university in Gaza? Um, on the first, we have not. It's uh, obviously we raise these issues um, uh, regularly with our Israeli counterparts uh, and seek information. I don't have um, uh, a report back on the uh, incident in the West Bank. With respect to um, with respect to the university, I think you're referring to the university in Gaza that we talked about a couple weeks ago. So we have raised that. It was last week. I wasn't here last week, so it couldn't well, have been me, with me last week. I think it was two. I think it was. I think. I think it was two. Yeah, ten days, two weeks, whatever. Whatever it was. Um, so. Yeah, but it's been a while. It's been. It's been yeah. a while. So I. Got nothing back? So I didn't say that. I will say. Okay. <laughs> I will say that. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate. I appreciate it. Um, it is an issue that we raised with the Israeli government. We've raised with them. Um, the issue of both the demolition of sites, which they have reported us, they have uh, conducted, on, they have uh, undertaken only when um, they were sites uh, from which terrorist activities were launched or plotted or being planned. Um, and we have raised with them the issue of the establishment of a buffer zone, because you've seen the reports that these uh, demolitions might have been to advance a buffer zone. Um, they have, I will say, we have made clear to them the same thing that we have said pub, pub, publicly, which is we are opposed to any reduction in the size of uh, the territory of Gaza. And what they have said to us is that they do not intend to occupy Gaza. Uh, they do not intend to leave forces there. And we're going to continue to engage with them on this question. Well, yeah, but that doesn't answer my question, which is specifically about the demolition of the, of the university. I mean, you say that, that, that they're only going to, they only target facilities or, or whatever with they are. That is what that is what they that is what they've reported back to us. Correct. But does that mean what seventy five percent of Gaza was, was so was, was, was so I don't want to mix uh, buildings in Gaza were like being used to plan or. Is that your understanding? So I don't want to, I, I was speaking specifically with respect to this demolition. There are obviously other buildings that have been hit in airstrikes, and some of those have been, no, uh, no, 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 I know, but let me just, let me just finish. So, some of them have been uh, instances where they are going after legitimate military targets. Some of them are instances where they make mistakes, right, where there is targeting that uh, either they have bad information or where the, the uh, you, you, refer to, you refer to, you refer to seven, you refer to seven, Matt, you refer to 70, you refer to 75% well, of buildings. So that's why I'm, that's, so that's why, that okay, you only, yes. first of all, that, that. understandable that there's that, going to be damage that, in, in any kind of an, a, I, an operation I, like this, but these are 
these, this, the university, and others that the IDF can, has put video out of. Can I are just? Not, they, they are intentional. Right. So, and, so and my and let me let me let, 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 so far, just give me hold give me on, well but let me finish well this. but all right you all let all of those we'll have a deal have, to let told, each other finish. They have told you that all of those that you've asked questions about at the, all all of those uh, buildings, those facilities uh, were being used, or had been used, to either plot or conduct yes operations. That is what and, I have said. And, and 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 you accept that. That 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 is what they respond. that is that is what they have told us. We don't have the ability to independently verify all these issues. But let me just let me just I want to follow up on what I was saying a minute ago. The reason I started to talk about airstrikes is you referred to 75% of buildings in Gaza being destroyed, I which, which, well, I, I, let me, I'm let me, sorry, I, I, I no, 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 I, let me, let me finish. I know it's not, it's not 75%, whatever the number is, but the great majority of them would not have been included in this controlled demolition activity that would have been hit through airstrikes, which is why I started to explain a different universe of possibilities. Yeah. So. Thanks. Uh, you report out a moment ago from Axios uh, that Secretary Blinken has ordered staff to prepare policy plans for a Palestinian state after the war in Gaza, and that this signals a policy shift in the administration. Do you have a comment on that? So there has been no policy shift in the administration. We have made quite clear publicly that we support the establishment of an independent independent Palestinian state. That's been the policy of the United States for some time. It has been the policy of this administration. You've seen the secretary speak about it uh, publicly. I'm not going to comment on the internal work that we do to advance that objective, but I will say that there are any number of ways that you could go about accomplishing that. There are any number of sequencing of events that you could carry out to accomplish that objective. And we look at a wide range of options, and we discuss those with um, partners in the region, as well as other partners inside the United States government. Um, but there has been no policy change. But presumably, I, I guess policy planning would have contingency plans in the works that would include a Palestinian state. I mean, is there something new? Was there a new, can you tell us if the secretary issued like a new directive? So uh, what I will say is yes, we support the establishment of an independent Palestinian state and we do a lot of work inside the government to uh, think about how to bring that about. And you see us talk about that work publicly when we're in the region, talk about it sometimes here. And as part of that work, obviously, we look at any number of options. That's part of the normal planning process. Uh, the vast majority of options never usually get implemented because we took, take things, uh, we put things on the drawing board and figure out what will work, what will be effective, and how best to sequence it. Um, so I won't get into that underlying policy planning process that we go about. Um, but yes, we are actively pursuing the establishment of an independent Palestinian state with real security guarantees for Israel because we do believe that is the best way to bring about lasting peace and security for Israel, for Palestinians, and for the region. Sorry, can, can I, can I just, yeah. just to put a little context in the, on this? Uh, hasn't the State Department been looking at what it would take to create a Palestinian state since the Clinton administration? Uh, at Maybe with at, the exception at, of the at, four years of at, the Trump administration? I would say at least that long, yes. <laughs> Correct. Uh, my, okay. my history only goes back nine months, but yes, it has been the longstanding well, uh, position of, of the United States. 20, 20 right. or so years. Hasn't, hasn't this always been? I feel like you're asking me leading questions, Matt, but yes, the, an the answer is yes. I will, the, okay. the witness will so, be appropriately so led. If, <laughs> if this report were to be true, it is it basically just a continuation of, of, of what has been going on with the exception of maybe the four years when, when Trump was president. So without confirming a specific report, I will say that Yes, we do have ongoing policy planning processes about how best to advance the establishment of an independent and, and, Palestinian and, and, state. And is it not correct that, that the, all of the diplomatic efforts that are going into, including a potential secretary return to uh, the Middle East, are, are heavily focused on day after and, 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 and long-term stability and security for the region, which you believe would include a Palestinian state? Uh, among other I'm things, very, sure very, very much so. Okay. Yeah, Thanks. very much so. A uh, question about the UN. So, um, UNRWA and the UN have kind of been giving conflicting guidance as to when they are going to 
quote unquote run out of funding for palestinians in gaza you got into this issue a little bit yesterday when you talked about the u s funding does the state have any clarity on how long it might be until UNRWA does actually run out of funding? So we've seen what they've said publicly, and obviously we engage with them privately as well. I will let them speak to questions of both of their funding and when it will expire, because it's not just obviously a U.S. government issue. We are not the only funder of UNRWA. There are other countries that do as well. So I will let them speak to, to that. We don't have any independent uh, information on that question. But as the top donor, don't you have a sense of when they're using the funds from the U.S. and we, how? Uh, we, of, of, of course we do, but as <laughs> we are not, because we're not the only donor, we don't know necessarily when other countries are making their contributions, whether there are others that are pending. In the same way I talked about yesterday, how we had upcoming uh, payments that were pending, that will be true for other countries as well. We don't have, the, it's, it's not an internal budget schedule for UNRWA that we keep at the United States. It's a, uh, a question that they keep it at UNRWA and the United Nations, so they're best to speak to that question. Do you have any sense that, as the Secretary has now said, um, the Secretary General has now said that this could be, the, the U.S.'s pause on funding could be catastrophic for Gazans? So what I would say to that is, first of all, to reiterate, as you've heard me say, as you've heard the Secretary say and others inside the administration say, the work that UNRWA does is critical. It is critical that um, uh, it's critical work to deliver food and water and medicine and other humanitarian assistance to uh, the Palestinian people. That said, the responses were in, or, I'm sorry, the 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 uh, the uh, allegations last week were incredibly troubling, and so it is exactly because the work is so important and the work should not be jeopardized that UNRWA needs to conduct the United Nations needs to conduct a full. <clears throat> investigation, respond as appropriate, and put into place measures to prevent such uh, uh, incidents from ever occurring again. The two, I, I, I don't actually, I, we get this question, I don't find the two in tension with each other. It is because the work is so important that we cannot allow it to be threatened, right? That UNRWA has to take this seriously. There has to be a, a, a real investigation. There has to be a full accountability, and there have to be appropriate measures put in place to happen again. I think the two go hand in hand. But just to follow up on that, Israel is saying that the UNRWA is fundamentally compromised. Uh, um, you know, so you still stand by uh, UNRWA in that, uh, uh, in that context? So we believe it's important that there be a full investigation and there be accountability and there be measures put in place, as I said, to prevent this hap from happening again. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we think UNRWA's work is critical. And we believe that there is no other partner on the ground right now who can replace UNRWA and can deliver uh, the humanitarian assistance. And I will say that in our conversations with the Israeli government, they have acknowledged to us at very senior levels that the work that UNRWA plays is important. Now, look, they have a long-standing uh, dispute with UNRWA that goes back to well before October 7th, as I know uh, you're, you're aware of, Leon. Um, and I'm sure that they will continue to have uh, 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 disputes with UNRWA that extend far beyond. Uh, the end of, of this conflict. But I, I can tell you that in our conversations, they recognize the critical role that UNRWA plays, and that importantly, there is no other humanitarian relief organization that can play that role in the short term. Uh, you said that, uh, sorry, the Secretary is going to meet the, the UN's uh, secret COG today. Um, and you mentioned yesterday that there would hopefully be some uh, work to lay the ground for this UN. Um, assessment mission in northern Gaza. Is there any update you can give on, on what's happened? There? I don't have an update of what happened today. I know that it's been planned for uh, uh, the initial you know, assessment. Uh, it's been planned for the next couple days. I actually just don't, I don't know what happened on the ground today. There's always kind of uh, questions about people being able to move about as they want to in Gaza, given ongoing fighting. Um, with respect to the, the Secretary's meeting today, what he will be emphasizing is that she is an individual who he has worked with in the past, who he has great confidence in, um, uh, that he welcomes her appointment uh, to this role. As you may know, he talked with her a couple weeks ago. Last time she was here in D.C., he was unfortunately traveling in the region and so couldn't meet with her. So looks forward to doing it today to discuss how we can continue to coordinate the humanitarian efforts that are so vital on the ground. Um, and in terms of that, the sort of uh, assessment mission was something that the Secretary came back with several weeks ago from, from the Middle East now. Is it 
what is it that's been holding up uh, getting that getting that assessment mission in there? It's quite clear. It was ready to go, and there was a resurgence of fighting in the north um, after after. Israel pulled a number of units out. There were Hamas fighters that regrouped and started launching rockets and started uh, launching attacks against Israeli forces. So, when that fighting, when the, with that resurgence of fighting, it just made it too difficult and too dangerous, well, too dangerous for a UN mission to actually be carried out. So, what we have been trying to uh, 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 to, to do is find a way for them to safely conduct this mission. We've been in contact or in conversation with the United Nations and with the government of Israel with, uh, uh, about how they can best do that. And, we, and I, I should add, we want to see it launched as soon as possible. And I think it would have been launched in the last few weeks, if not for this resurgence of fighting. Shannon. Thank you. The Iranian-linked militia that the Pentagon says is likely responsible for the attack on Tower 22 over the weekend has announced that it's going to temporarily suspend attacks on U.S. forces, uh, really implying that Iran has pressured the group to do so. Uh, the Pentagon basically responded that it's too little too late. But from the State Department's perspective, is this a positive sign that Iran might be listening? Uh, so I, I will echo something I heard my colleagues at the Pentagon also say with respect to KH, which is that we will judge this group, as we do all of these Iranian proxy groups, not by what they say, but by what they do. And this is a group that we have seen launch attacks on uh, uh, U.S. forces in the region, U.S. interests in the region. Um, we have made clear for some time that those attacks need to stop. They did not stop. And so, as you heard the, the President say, we will be holding um, uh, organizations accountable. This is not to preview any specific actions that we will take, but that we will be taking steps to hold accountable those who are responsible for the deaths of U.S. soldiers. But on that pending response, the President said he's already decided how to respond. Is there any fear from an escalatory standpoint in this building that something that's sustained, multifaceted, uh, you know, hitting multiple targets could just contribute to the tit for tat we've seen? So I will say that, that the United States response will not be escalatory. Uh, our actions to date to defend U.S. troops have not been escalatory. We have made clear from the outset of this conflict that we don't believe it's in anyone's interest to see the conflict escalate. It's not in the United States' interest. We don't believe it's in the interest of any country in the region, and that includes Iran. At the same time, we will defend our personnel and we will defend uh, our interests. And we made that clear for uh, the last for, for a number of months, and you've seen us respond and take action, um, take military action at times to respond to attacks on U.S. troops and to respond to attacks on commercial shipping. And we will continue to hold accountable those who attack our forces. Uh, but we will do so in a way that is appropriate, while at the same time making clear we do not want to see this conflict escalate in any way, shape, or form. Jenny. Thank you, Beth, uh, to Cations and uh, North Korea and China and Russia. Uh, last week, uh, as North Korea launched the uh, cruise missiles, uh, Chinese foreign ministry officers and North Korean foreign minister or officers met in Pyongyang. And China and North Korea pledged to strengthen strategic dialogue all levels. As you know, China continues to protect North Korea in the UN Security Council resolution with its veto power. Do you think China is using North Korea strategically in competition with the United States? So I, I will just say uh, in answer to that that obviously we have had great concern about the DPRK's uh, uh, provocative destabilizing actions. And one of the things that we have um, pressed China to do in our conversations with them is to use their relationship with DPRK to engage in diplomacy uh, and try to bring an end to those actions. Uh, also, uh, regarding money laundering in North Korea, what measures is being taken by United States against Russia and China to block fund funding for North Korea's nuclear and uh, missile development? So we have imposed a number of sanctions with respect to North Korea's nuclear program, but I don't have anything uh, to preview today. But anything the, further to preview. I know with respect to financing of that program, I don't have anything further to preview the today. The U.S. and uh, China, they're talking about the cyber hacking, you know. I, I, I just don't have anything further to offer on it. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Alex. A couple of separate topics in terms of Ukraine. Can you tell us anything about uh, Tony Nuland's trip to Ukraine? 
beyond the result you just guys, uh, put out, uh, about the timing of it and any particular message you want to convey? So with respect to the timing of it, I would I'd say only that uh, she has traveled to Ukraine previously. Obviously, the secretary traveled to Ukraine last fall, and she traveled with him uh, at that time, but has conducted her own uh, 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 travel, her own visits to Ukraine, as part of a regular tempo of engagement you have seen uh, between the United States and Ukraine. Um, she was there today to meet with senior Ukrainian officials uh, regarding recent battlefield developments and the importance of continued global assistance to support Ukraine. Um, she was also there to highlight ongoing anti-corruption reform efforts to bolster Ukraine's economic recovery and continue its trajectory towards Euro-Atlantic uh, integration, and I will say that she, um, uh, while she was there, once again strongly reiterated the United States' ongoing support for Ukraine in its war against Russian aggression. Thank you. But in Ankara earlier this week, she was quoted as saying Turkey will be welcomed back into F-35 program if the uh, S-400 uh, issue, quote unquote, is resolved. Uh, how do you guys see that resolution? Uh, Turkey already has purchased that and got punished for that. Do you expect them to return back to Russia, perhaps to Ukraine, or what is the resolution that you guys are looking for? So I don't think I, there's anything I want to add to that other than say that we just got finished um, with a uh, long, drawn-out process over the F-16s uh, that we are uh, providing to Turkey. I don't think I'm ready to jump into the next iteration of, of uh, warplanes at this time when we've just notified and not yet even delivered the F-16s. Okay, but one more inquiry, if I may. Uh, there are reports that the administration opposes Ukraine's uh, membership prospects in NATO, despite the fact that most of the members are in favor. Why? Uh, I, those reports are incorrect. You've heard the president himself, as well as the secretary, say it a number of times that uh, uh, Ukraine will be a member of NATO. Can I move to South Caucasus, because I have two more. Uh, can, can, on, can, on Ukraine? Yeah, go ahead. It's, it's, it's just, come yeah. Later, yes. yeah. I, I cannot promise I can come back to you later, Alex. We have a full room. And no, 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 one, no, no, no one gets seven questions, but go, go ahead. I was just wondering on Ukraine if you have any reaction to the UN's uh, top court uh, today basically throwing out the uh, the, the case uh, Ukraine, Ukraine brought against Russia. Of course, this was before the invasion, but still throwing out the, the, just about the whole case. Yeah, I, I only will say that um, we've seen the ruling. It's apparently 117 pages long and quite complex, so we're reviewing it, but don't have a, a reaction yet. A very quick message, if I may. Good, quick, on, on yeah. Azerbaijan, uh, does that research have any, any uh, policy, any approach, any view on the next week's uh, snap elections? Uh, I, I don't have anything to offer. Uh, Georgia, I yeah. let, me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Yeah. Back on Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. If it had gone the other way around, I'm assuming you would. So my only, my only understanding is that it is a, uh, like I said, 117 page uh, ruling that co that covers a number of different issues, and I know our team is reviewing it now. Yeah. Um, and we will we will obviously have a response to it. It's just yeah. that we were, we didn't have it ready by the time we had we hadn't fully digested it and had anything by the time I came out here half an hour ago. So, let me go. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, after the Iranian-backed group's attacks on new forces in Jordan, you sanctions one Iraqi bank, and today you sanctioned three entities in Turkey and Lebanon. Does that related to, does that a part of the response to the Iranian RGC groups for what they did in order to helping the, these groups and also providing the weapons for these groups? To attacking you, or it is a separate? These were part of our ongoing efforts to hold accountable um, entities and individuals who uh, generate funds for the IRGC uh, and Hezbollah to, to finance their destabilizing activities. And today, the Iranian IRGC commander said that we are here from Americans that they are threatening us to attacking us, but we leave no response. That we, we leave no attacks and response. Do you think that this will? This will affect the calculation of your administration when you're thinking to responding to attacks that happen in Jordan. I, I just don't think I can um, uh, get into that without talking about what our response will be. I will say we are obviously um, uh, quite aware of the position of every entity in every country in the region and what the president, what the national security team do uh, is look at all these factors in coming up with our response. But we have made quite clear that we will hold accountable uh, those who are responsible for the attacks on U.S. personnel. Gita, go ahead. Matt, um, I want to follow up with uh, Shannon's questions about the retaliation uh, that the U.S. Uh, says it's going to take uh, against. You, you quoted your Pentagon counterpart yesterday. Um, 
That was when the KH in Iraq had announced that it was going to suspend their mm -hmm. military activities. Now, today, uh, Syria Observatory says that the IRGC has ordered uh, its proxies in Syria to also stop attacking U.S. interests. Um, could this in any way impact at least the scale and scope of the U.S. response to these groups? So again, I don't want to comment on what that response will look like, and it's hard to answer the question without uh, uh, commenting on that. But I will say that with respect to all of these groups, we will judge them by their actions, not by what they say. And so what we have seen uh, a number of these proxy groups is take uh, actions against United States personnel, against United States interests. And as we've made clear, we will hold them accountable for those actions. Have there been any communication with Iran, whether directly or indirectly, since the attack on Tower 22? Uh, I don't have any, co any, um, co any communications, either direct or indirect, to, uh, to read out. As we've said uh, in the past, we have ways to, uh, uh, to um, make our interests known to Iran when it's in our interest to do so. But I don't think our position is lost on Iran. I think they know quite clearly that we, number one, don't want escalation in the region. We, number two, want the attacks on our personnel to stop and our interests to stop. And number three, we'll hold accountable those, those uh, groups that launched the attacks, those responsible for the attacks at a time and place of our choosing. Um, in answer to Shannon, you, you also said that the U.S. response is, will not be uh, escalatory. How is that? Uh, because the U.S. response will be to hold accountable those who launch attacks on our troops. It is a, it, 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 the response will be a justified response to attacks on our troops that caused the death of three American soldiers and the injury of dozens more. Um, it is in, in, and, and we will do so in a way that, I was going to say, we will also make clear to everyone in the region that we don't see conflict with Iran. We don't want conflict with Iran. We don't see conflict with any party in the region. And we don't think conflict is in anyone's interest, but it is incumbent upon the United States to protect our military, and we will do that. Um, one uh, more question. Um, all right, these groups have said they're going to stop their uh, actions, but on the other side, another Iranian proxy group, the Houthis, have said that they're going to continue um, uh, standing or facing the U.S. and the U.K. They're going to continue with their actions and everything. Uh, seems like this is their, what the U.S. is doing is trying to stop them is, is not really uh, We have always different. been, I will say with respect to the Houthis, we have always made clear that this would um, be a process that would take place over time. Um, uh, you um, are not going to eliminate someone's military capabilities overnight, but if they continued these attacks, we would take their appropriate uh, actions to degrade their ability to do so. All right, thank you. Go ahead. Thanks, Matthew. Um, so I've been told by a reliable source that the IDF is looking into um, Red Cross personnel um, participating in the October 7th attack. Is the State Department aware of such an investigation? Uh, uh, I am not. Okay. And um, given the Axios report about um, State Department plans to possibly recognize an independent Palestine, what do you say to critics who would say that this is rewarding terrorism? It, so, I first of all, I, I'm, sometimes I struggle to even know how to answer the, those types of questions. Um, not all, pal first of all, let me just say what I was about to say, which is I, I spoke to this at length uh, earlier, but the idea that all Palestinians are terrorists is obviously just flat wrong. Well, you critics say, whatever. It's obviously flat wrong. And um, uh, I would say those that... Uh, I, I'm not going to go there. Look, we believe that the establishment. <laughs> How can you be so sure? Yeah, we, you we, we uh, I, I, so it's, it's, it is a, it is, I will say, it's, it is a ridiculous <laughs> argument. Um, it has been the longstanding policy of the United States to um, advance the establishment of an independent Palestinian state. It continues to be our policy, and it is our policy because we believe not only is that 
the right answer to the legitimate aspirations of the Palestinian people, but also because it is the answer to provide lasting security to the Israeli people. Uh, and the, 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 never mind. And finally, um, yeah, given, sorry, I, I keep almost doing it. No, go ahead. Given, and then finally, given the attacks of Jordan elsewhere in the Middle East, have State Department personnel been evacuated? Has there been increased security at embassies and consulates in the region? So we always take appropriate measures to, uh, uh, to protect our embassies, but we don't also don't talk about those measures publicly. Saeed, Thank did you, you not get first the notice all, the briefing had moved up? Yeah, first of all, I apologize for being it's late. It's fine. It's Murphy's Law, and I don't want to go into explaining. I'm aware of Murphy's Law. Uh, uh, you may have uh, talked about this. I just want to follow up on the honorable thing. Has there been any development, you know, in terms of evidence or the validity of evidence and all these things about people who participated? Uh, so there is evidence that the Israeli government uh, uh, developed that they right. presented to us and that they presented to UNRWA. Uh -huh. uh, we found that evidence to be credible. But you don't just have to take the United States government's. No, no, uh, hold on. Oh, let me. You don't have to just have to take our opinion uh, that the evidence was credible. UNRWA found the evidence credible as well. Okay. So let me ask you this then. I mean, you know, look, Israel stands accused of committing genocide. You know, and it's 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 an allegation. You know, that we reject, it was, it was, that, and we believe is unfounded. CJ and so on, but they continue to receive a lot of money. I mean, they get three point eight billion dollars a year. There is, uh, you know, talk about uh, pumping maybe fourteen billion dollars and so on. So, how do you? juxtapose these things against one another? So, first of all, I'm a, the, that's a kind of a, a loose question, but I'll say with respect okay. to the, cha the charges of genocide, we believe that they're unfounded, and we have said that we believe that they're unfounded. <laughs> we continue to support Israel's right to take action to ensure that the terrorist attacks of October 7th cannot be repeated, but we want them to do so in a way that complies with fully with international humanitarian law. Yeah, there are certainly, you know, settlers who serve in the Israeli army that, that you probably, you know, designate as uh, either extremist or you know, things of that nature. I mean, we can also look at the Israeli government uh, that has maybe 12 members who basically have called for the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians, but they continue to be members of that government in good standing, receiving a great deal of aid, correct? And we made clear our disagreements with the calls by members of, of uh, the government to uh, force Palestinians from their homes in Gaza. Not only did we say that publicly, you may recall us doing this a few weeks ago, but when the secretary traveled to Israel on his most recent visit, he made clear that he thought it was important that the Israeli government speak out against that, those matters and those comments publicly and reiterate that it is not the policy of the Israeli government to force uh, Palestinians from Gaza. And in the days after the secretary left, that's exactly what the Israeli government did. And finally, they, uh, it seems that members of Congress yesterday uh, met with an Israeli official and they discussed with an alternative to UNRWA. Uh, is the government of the United States looking at alternatives to UNRWA? So first of all, let me say that I obviously can't speak for members of Congress and members and, and, and members of and, I, I, I know, I know, just, and members of let me just get it out. Sorry. And members of Congress don't speak for the United States government. Um, we believe that UNRWA plays uh, a critical role that cannot be replaced. There is no other humanitarian partner in, the re in Gaza right now that could play the role that UNRWA does. Thank you. Go ahead. I'll come to you next, William. Today, the House Foreign Affairs Committee is working on the um, systematic torture and killing of former U.S. Uh, allies in Afghanistan by Taliban who left behind by the Biden administration in Afghanistan. And UN also has documented hundreds of similar cases. What the U.S. government is doing to protect its allies in Afghanistan? So um, I am not familiar with the testimony that was given today, and I want to, to make sure that I give a uh, complete and accurate response. Let me take that question back. I want to see what the testimony actually was and, give you, and get you a response to it. What really, about Afghan Adjustment Act? I, I'm sorry? What about Afghan Adjustment Act? Don't you think it's a time to Biden administration to push the Congress for passing Afghan Adjustment hey, Act? Let me, take, let me just take that one back. Really, go ahead. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, I wanted to just go back to the Janine Hospital raid just quickly. I have a colleague who spoke to, who went to the hospital, spoke to people there. So I, I know you're still waiting for an assessment, but he said that there were reports or that he had eyewitness accounts that the receptionist was 
knocked out cold with the butt of a, of a gun. Is an action like that I mean, is something that you would condone in, in the context of a, I guess, targeted assassination? Uh, again, it's, I don't, it's always difficult when I get these types of questions because you have allegations that are unverified and I'm essentially asked to speak about something that's not yet verified and it's very difficult to do so. Um, I can only reiterate what I said yesterday, which is we do, we you know, want to see hospitals protected. We want to see civilians protected. At the same time, Israel does have a right to carry out legitimate, ter you know, anti-terrorism uh, operations in Gaza and in the West Bank. Uh, but we want to see them do so in a way that respects international humanitarian law um, uh, and also doesn't increase instability in the West Bank. I have uh, two questions, one on Venezuela and one on Mexico. The first one, uh, do you have any response to uh, the government of Venezuela's threat to stop migration cooperation and not taking deportation flights? Yeah, and the second on Mexico, today in the morning, the Mexican president blamed uh, the State Department directly for being behind the story published in ProPublica about uh, his first presidential campaign being linked to drug money. What do you have to say about this? So I don't have any response uh, uh, to the first one. And with the response to the second one, uh, I haven't even read the story. Um, uh, I have no idea. I, I, it's hard to comment when no, I haven't even read. It's hard to comment on a story I haven't even read. So uh, I, I don't have any comment. No story to both? No, I, I, on that, <laughs> no, I don't have a specific response. I'm happy to take the first one and, and follow up on it with respect to the second one. Um, it's just not something I'm going to comment on. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So today was a bomb blast in Pakistan at uh, Imran Khan's party PTI election rally. Uh, do you have any comments on that? Um, so I will say you saw the, the department comment on this earlier today when the assistant secretary uh, issued a tweet on it. We, um, as we did in that, that comment earlier today, extend our deepest sympathies to those affected by the attack on the PTI party rally in Pakistan. We believe in the resilience of the Pakistani people and their ability to recover. Um, this attack is one of many we have seen in the last month against multiple parties across Pakistan. The election commission itself has come under attack in several places. We strongly condemn any violence which undermines the electoral process. The Pakistani people have the right to choose their leader without fear or reprise of reprisal or violence, and we remain committed to working with Pakistan to address the shared threat posed by terrorist groups throughout the region, and we support the Pakistan government's efforts to combat terrorism. The Pakistani police arrested a uh, number of uh, PTI, Imran Khan's party workers, for just for a peaceful election rally. I mean, it looks like Pakistani government is not going to allow uh, PTI supporters, Iranian so supporters, to so just peacefully gather somewhere for the election rally. I mean, there is, looks like no more freedom of speech, just for one party, not for others. So I can't comment on that specific on that specific report, I, I because I haven't seen it. But I will say, as we have, have long said, we want to see free and fair elections take place in 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 Pakistan. So the last, one last question. Yeah. According to a media report, uh, United States blocks yes. three billion dollars drone sale to India until meaningful meaningful investigation of Sikh leader. Mr. Pandu assassination conspiracy. Is it true or just a fake news? So, <laughs> I love, <laughs> nice try. Um, the, the, so I'll say that generally the U.S. Defense, uh, India Defense Partnership has seen significant growth over the past decade. Um, this is a proposed sale that was announced during Prime Minister Modi's visit last year. Uh, we believe it offers significant potential to further advance strategic uh, technology cooperation with India and military cooperation in the region. Uh, of course, Congress plays, as you know, an important role in the U.S. arms transfer uh, uh, process. We routinely consult with members of Congress uh, with the foreign, on the Foreign Affairs Committees before our formal notification to, um, so we can address questions that they might have. Um, but I don't have any comment on when that formal notification might take place. I said come to you next. No. Thank you, are the reports that the United States will uh, hold the peace uh, conference uh, this fall between uh, Palestinian and uh, Israeli to uh, establish uh, or to discuss uh, establishing the Palestinian state? I, I've not seen those reports, but I don't have any announcements of any such conferences uh, to make today. 
Internationally, uh, uh, many consider that the United States is not uh, qualified and unsuitable to mediate this rule between Palestinian and Israeli, especially uh, the rule of the United States in Gaza war and the uh, strong relation uh, uh, ties between the United States and Israel. So I will say that when we have traveled in the region, one of the things the Secretary has heard from countries in the region is that they welcome the United States' role in both trying to resolve this crisis and in uh, ultimately reaching a broader regional agreement to establish peace and security for both Israel and Palestinians alike and, of course, for the broader region. What we have heard over and over again is it is a role that only the United States can play. It's, of course, a very difficult one. These aren't easy issues, but it is a role that we will continue to play because of how important the issues are. Okay, thank you. And Simon, and then we'll wrap. Um, I wanted to ask a couple of things on Myanmar uh, because you had some sanctions today um, and uh, the anniversary of the coups tomorrow. Uh, th third anniversary of, of the coup uh, happened there. Um, so obviously these sanctions are targeting uh, fuel imports and, and imports to, to, for domestic arms production for the military. Uh, this is a military that's engaged in a civil war. So I'm interested from the US perspective, uh, are you trying to, do you have a side that you're supporting in the, the conflict between you know Burmese military and uh, groups that oppose the coup that they, conducted. So what we have done, and what I'll reiterate today, is to call on the military regime to end its violence against the people of Burma, to release those unjustly and arbitrarily detained, uh, to allow unhindered humanitarian uh, access and respect the will of the people for return to the path uh, towards representative democracy. Uh, we have always supported the people of uh, Burma and their ability to chart their own path. and including through the actions that you saw us take today. We have ramped up uh, our economic and, and political pressure on the military regime, including by restricting U.S. dollar transactions with uh, state-owned um, enterprises that provide revenue enabling the military to, uh, to harm and kill its, uh, uh, its own civilians. So we are going to continue to support efforts by the opposition to the regime uh, and uh, to seek a resolution of the conflict that provides for genuine and inclusive multi-party democracy. And in terms of those efforts to support op opponents to the regime, the last year's NDAA um, included language that um, you know, gives you the, the opportunity to provide non-lethal aid to people's defense forces and ethnic armed groups in Burma. I wonder, are you providing any non-lethal aid to those groups? Uh, let me take that one back and get sure. an And just finally, the, um, the National Security Advisor met with Wang Yi in, in Bangkok uh, on the weekend. Uh, out of that came from the White House uh, some discussion that the Burma Myanmar was discussed in, in, in that meeting and talk about lower level talks potentially between U.S. officials and Chinese officials on, on trying to resolve the conflict in Myanmar. Uh, is there anything you can tell us on that? Are there, are there you know, a working group level meetings that are planned to, uh, to try to um, you know, discuss this with the Chinese, and what would you want the Chinese to uh, to, to do on, on that? So there's nothing that I can speak to today other than to say that we have believed that um, uh, Chinese engagement in this on this issue could be constructive, uh, and it's something we'll be following up on in the coming days and weeks, and we'll have more to say uh, at that time, but I don't have anything to announce today. Thanks. Well, that wrap for today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.